okay. I don't know why I could do this, but I'm talking to a Trumbull guy for probably about an hour, and then I'm leaving you guys again. What's up, man? All right, how's it going? Pretty good. What about you? Pretty okay. So uh, debating uh, Trump things. So you're you're heavily critical of Trump, and uh, even more critical of his support. Qu quite hyp hyperbolic. I would, I've uh, uh, yeah, wait. seen you on many occasions. Say, real, uh, wait, 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 real quick, real tell. quick, real quick. Can you um, either turn the sensitivity really far down? Hello? Is this, uh, is this better? Yeah, I'll let you know if it gets up again. So you're heavily critical of Trump and uh -huh. even more critical of supporters, and you've made many hyperbolic statements denigrating the intelligence of people who support Trump. Um, how about let's amend a statement and say I'm probably more critical of Trump than his supporters, I guess, and that um, I think that Trump is an idiot. I'm sure Trump probably has some intelligent followers, but yeah, generally I think they're stupid, sure. Okay. Right. So, I mean, I guess I'll just uh, say things I support about Trump, then uh, we'll debate it, right? Yeah, sure. I'm curious. Go for it. So, uh, first thing, school choice. Uh, well, what, what's your opinion of school choice? Um... I think it's bad theoretically, and I think empirically it's done pretty poorly that I'm aware of as well. Um, to be so, I mean, I'll... Oh, school choice. Oh, yeah, oh, you, about... you can... Wait, oh, hello? You continue. You can, oh, yeah. you can... I was going to say, um, just, just to be clear, when we talk about school choice, we're we talking about like the vouchers that let you go um, and, and pick which school you want your children to go to? or. Well, this, yeah, this is an important part, defining what school choice means, because school choice is quite quite a large, has a large definition and could mean anything from autonomously created school curricula to vouchers to also just letting parents choose, choose the uh, uh, education uh, centers for their children rather than being locked into certain ones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I would agree that vouchers is probably the least empirically proven of the three I just mentioned, but the okay. other two I'd say are quite uh, empirically tested and shown to, so I mean, I think I think we could agree that currently the U.S. education system is complete trash, right? It spends like 153 percent of the OECD average of education funding uh, per capita per student, uh, yet it ranks like 28th in the PISA scores, right? Yeah, so sure. So the, the, the U.S. system needs reform. Yeah. Uh, there's with school choice. There's always been a, a long history of bipartisan support. You've had you had Reagan, uh, Clinton, Bush, and Obama all all support it. And uh, the Obama administration, even uh, the Department of Education under him, wrote a report uh, praising it for its effectiveness. And also, the OECD put out a report also saying that intelligent schools of choice is effective. Wait, wait what's, what are we talking about right now? It showed that autonomous uh, children under autonomously created uh, school curricula, and that is that created by principals, teachers, or parents, or any combination of them, scored better on PISA tests relative to their peers under the national education curriculum. Um, which part of this am I supposed to read? I guess. What, would you, uh, what would you say to that? Well, I mean, if that's what's said to be true, then I mean, I would imagine uh, it's true, right? <laughs> you're saying something, uh, not, I don't hear you. Man. Oh, shit. Hold on, fuck, I gotta restart my... Discord. Okay, I took care. The sample rate was different. It should have fixed my um. Hopefully, any robot audio. I think Does my audio sounds okay now, or is it fucked? No, it's still fucked. Is it understandable, or should I just cut the stream? Like, because I, I can't do anything about it. It's just a laptop mic. There's nothing I can change. Is it like super fucked, or is it just kind of fucked, or what? All right, hey, can you hear me? Sorry. What's up, man? Um, okay, they're fine. Sorry, I changed my microphone shit and I got fucking weird for a second. Yeah, it's okay. Um, okay, all right, it's fine enough. Um, okay. So I assume you... Um, so, yeah, so you said that... Um, can, can you explain what is autonomous schooling like parents teacher well, like when they make, uh... created educational curricula so that which was not created uh from the top down but rather from the down up sorry down Wait, to who's, the top. who creates curriculum from the top down well like the federal state or oh, sorry the federal uh, organization in this case the federal government of america would create it for the child uh, not the child schools the public schools uh that doesn't happen though that 
well, it, no, it doesn't happen. But we have Common Core, which is nearly equivalent. And no, not at all. Wait, what's your understanding of what Common Core is? Uh, what's it's a national education. Uh, sorry, it's a set of standards. It's not uh, federal, obviously, but it's a set of standards that some states have uh, chose to embrace. I believe it's thirty-three. Last time I checked. Yeah, what? Well, yeah, so set of standards. So it's not. It's not the curriculum, yeah. right? It's just like the specific um, criteria that your students are supposed to be able to meet at the end of their graduating, whatever year in elementary, right? Yeah. Well, no, elementary. Uh, I or elementary up through K twelve. Yeah, yeah, up through up through high school. Sorry, I went to like a Catholic school. We did things like that. But yeah, up through twelfth, before you get to college. Yeah. So um, it seems like you could do this autonomous stuff and have Common Core and everything. I don't see like what the contradiction is or whatever. Yeah, well, I'm just saying that school choice is uh, it's it's been supported by both uh, Democrats and Republicans in all the presidential administrations since Reagan to now, and that it's it, it's an easily supportable poll. But yeah, well, sure. I, 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 yeah, I'm not sure what we're talking about. Trump, when Trump has talked about school choice, Trump is talking about vouchers generally. Yeah, but he's also he's also made multiple comments referring to allowing kids, well, allowing parents to send their kids to wherever they want to, rather than being locked into certain areas. Yeah, isn't that that's vouchers, right? Well, not necessarily. Um, it could be vouchers. Okay, let but... me let, let me just talk real quick, just so so I know what I'm talking about. My understanding of what a voucher was, maybe I'm wrong, but a voucher is basically something that says, "Hey, I would go to school in this school district, but now that I have a voucher, I can travel to a district that I wouldn't normally be allowed to go to school in." Isn't that what a voucher is, or is a voucher? Am I misunderstanding this? Well, no, that is, but uh, Trump hasn't exactly been too specific on how it worked in regard to uh, ch parents choosing where their children go to for education, uh, K-12 and below. Okay. I was under the impression that, that Trump, the Trump administration was embracing the voucher system, like that well, uh, budget and voucher. It tried to, among other things, but uh, the incompetence of Betsy DeVos, which is Trump's uh, education pick, uh -huh. uh, torpedoed all of that anyway. It's all dead in the water. Okay, so what movement by the Trump administration are we praising here then? Well, an attempt in the right direction is better than no movement in the right direction. Yeah, but we, you and I just agreed that vouchers were the worst of the things that you... Well, no, no, I said, no, I didn't say that. I said vouchers haven't been improved, as empirically proven to be as good as the other things I mentioned. I thought Especially vouchers have been shown to be inadequate, like like actually bad. I thought Sweden had a little trice where they attempted a school voucher system and ended pretty bad for them and they... And then most of the evidence points to vouchers, like leading to lower scores and whatnot. I, I'm uh, well, vouchers leading to lower reading. schools. That mm -hmm. is not that's not substantiated in the major uh, OECD report regarding school uh, school uh, vouchers. And also, Sweden is. Uh, I'm not too sure about the Sweden example. I'm not familiar with the education of Sweden. So okay. Okay. How? What is the um? What is the date of the um? Of that OECD report. I'm actually unsure. Okay. Uh, it was linked to on their site regarding uh, school vouchers. Uh, I just see, okay. It seems uh, 2017. There you go. 2017. Okay, that's really recent. Then this article might be out of date. Um, this is just what I'm, I remember reading that um, school vouchers lead to lower math and reading scores, and that had been empirically demonstrated. I, th I thought that was, but it's possible that the either the OECD thing doesn't talk about this or that this is incorrect, and I didn't dive deep enough into the article, but. Hmm. Well, I mean, let, let's move on to something more uh, bombastic, I guess, because, I mean, school choice is quite a boring thing to discuss. How about the Trump tax cuts? We'll just... Yeah, sure. Okay, what's your position on them? Um, I don't know. It's hardcore deficit spending um, in, a, in a part where the economy is already, like, massively booming. It seems really irresponsible from a fiscal point of view, and it seems like the majority of the money went back to the wealthiest Americans anyway, so you know, I'm not sure. Okay, so... Obviously, to an correctly analyze it, we have to dis discuss the costs and then the obviously the benefits, right? So, what would you agree the costs of the tax cuts were, or do you want me to define it? Because I, I actually have some numbers here of what the costs. Were. Well, I mean, it would, it would have been whatever it contributed to our budget deficit, right? Yeah, co costs as in, uh, in through twenty twenty nine, how much less federal money will there be? Yeah, and, taxes. Uh, are well, sure. I I took all the numbers, so obviously, you know, everyone has a different number. Uh, I just, so I took the Joint Committee on Taxation, the Penn Warden budget, budget Model, the CBO, and the Tax Policy Center. I took all their numbers, which only which range from one to two trillion, and I got the number one to 1.6 trillion. So how about we agree on that for the purpose of this discussion, that the Trump's tax cuts 
will, through 2029, will decrease federal uh, revenue by 1.9, sorry, 1.6 trillion dollars. Sure. What does that come out to per year or whatever? Is this like a 10-year projection? Uh, well, what do, you, what do you mean? Are you talking about the renewal of the Trump tax cuts? Oh, no, I'm asking that, is that, is that trillion? That's not per year, yeah. is it? No, no, that's through 2029. Okay, yeah, so that's about, so 20... divided by 10 is about 200 billion a year or whatever, or 160 billion yeah. a year or whatever, right? Yeah, so roughly, yeah. Okay, sure, yeah. So what, so what does the Trump tax cut have to do, in your opinion, to justify it? Or do you not have something, and then you, you look at what it has done to then figure out if it's justified or not? Um, I guess it's if the funding is diverted into good things that are uh, leading to empirically dem like demonstrated outcomes that are improving the lives of most Americans, or at least the ones that need the most. So the Joint Committee on Taxation estimated that there'd be a cumulative GDP total increase of uh, $1.891 trillion, and the Penn Warden budget model estimated a GDP increase of up to $2.842 trillion. Uh, and then also... The repatriation of one trillion greatly contributes to the deleveraging that uh, U.S. firms are currently undergoing. And uh, well, what do you think of those two things? Aren't those uh, extremely justifying of the uh, Trump tax cut? No, no, not at all. GDP increase absolutely has nothing to do with um, whether or not a tax cut is effective or not. I would imagine any tax cut would have a massive increase in GDP. It should. It's this is Keynesian economics, right? That people shit on Obama for. Anytime the uh... well, no, this isn't Keynesian economics, though. It's essentially the same thing, that money has more velocity in the economy, that if we get let people keep their money, that they can spend that through the economy and whatnot, right? This, in a really roundabout way, sure. I mean, Keynesian economics is, regarding at least uh, fiscally expansionary policy, is only to be pursued during, e during an economic contract and doesn't really have to do with it doing an economic boom. So that's not going to be our differences here is that one is practiced in contraction one is a boom. I, I mean, I, yeah, I guess regardless of what you want to call it, it's just it's deficit spending is what we're doing. I, don't, I mean, if yeah. you I mean, pump money into the economy, then, of course, the GDP is going to grow. Like, that just seems to, like, logically follow. I mean, we could theoretically set tax rates to zero, and I'm sure the GDP would boom massively. But I don't know if that, like, makes the tax cuts good. Well, what about employment will be 3% higher every year? Uh, sorry, the employment level will be 3% higher than it would have been every year through 2029. That was estimated um, by the seat. I don't know if employment level is, is the best way to to measure the success of our workers right now. I think that um, either like consumer pricing index, maybe median wages pegged to inflation, um, and then looking at statics, statistics like underemployment are probably more important. So like right now, um, like our unemployment right now is, is lower than it should be. I think it's at like 3.5%. Um, it's, yeah, it's lower than the natural rate of unemployment. Yeah. So like um, I, I don't think um, – yeah, I don't think that just looking at or just focusing on unemployment is necessarily the, the best way measure to look at it, or if it's even that great at all. Uh, so then what about non-financial uh, companies have increased capital expenditures uh, 3% relative to uh, the last quarter, sorry, the last quarter prior to the Trump tax being implemented, and it's continued as until uh, now? Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I mean, every stat you're giving me is just when you, when you give people more money, they do more things with it. I'm not, yeah, of course, yes. this, is, this is obviously true. But like, why not just set the tax rate to 0% then and watch all of these numbers grow massively? Well, because then you couldn't fund federal programs. Okay, which are not being funded right now because we're- Okay, so thing, right? the question is again, what does the Trump tax rate have to do for you to say it's a, it, you know, it's a positive cost- well, I mean, like, so for me, I think that there are some public programs that desperately need to be funded. So things like infrastructure upgrades is something that gets talked about a ton in the United States. Um, doing something to fix the VA is something that gets talked about a ton in the United States. The what, sorry? Um, I didn't VA is the, I think it's either oh, the, the yeah, Veterans Administration or Association. I think it's administration, right? Yeah, I mean, like, um, th these are things that, that all dram drastically require funding. Um, I'm not sure what the fuck is going on with Social Security or, <laughs> or if that could be fixed. I mean, the Republicans are going after that now, which I think is a good thing. Oh, yeah, well, I don't know how they're going to fund any of that when they're literally decreasing the, the funds available. But, um, yeah, I mean... I mean I, I, what do you mean by that? What do you mean by de de decreasing the funds available? Well, Obsession. everything related to the Trump tax cuts is literally deficit spending, right? We're just going to yeah. we're going to keep spending with the government. We're going to keep borrowing from the Treasury, and we're just going to do that, you know, at higher and higher and higher levels. And then you're saying, well, look, the GDP is growing. Well, of course it is. I mean, that's what happens when you give free money to an economy, especially yeah, but expansionary period. When, right? when you say that the Republican, I mean, 
Social security is a non-discretionary item, so therefore it can only be the funding is only increased or decreased by screwing with the payroll taxes. It doesn't come out of the treasury, well yet at least. Wait, I'm sorry. Could you say that again? The social security is a non-discretionary program and has no effects on the federal budget currently. Sorry, sorry, federal deficit. Don't we have to borrow money from the Federal Reserve to pay that off if we don't if we don't receive enough tax receipts in order to do it? Well, I mean, Social Security, ha for now at least, until twenty thirty four, which is when it becomes insolvent, it will have it can it will fund itself. It has it has reserve funds of uh, two hundred something billion. Oh Obviously, sure, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Social Social Security yeah. itself might, yeah, but all of our non discretionary yeah. spending and everything won't, right? Oh yeah, yeah, non discretionary. Sorry, yeah, sure. no discretionary. Not, yeah, discretionary. Yeah, the discretionary spending is what our federal budget deals with every year, and then less tax receipts in means, yeah. Yeah, a bit, I mean, Social Security has to be, I mean, I, I'd prefer to just be destroyed, right? Because, I mean, I'm never going to see a penny, right? I'm in my early 20s. I doubt I'll see a penny of it anyway. It's a horrible program. Would you agree with that or no? Um, no, I don't think destroying Social Security is a good idea, no. But Well, I mean, I'd characterize Social Security as the most cancerous program in the country, distributing benefits with no regard for the general indigence of the recipients. And it's funded by possibly the most regressive tax in the country. Isn't it? Wait, what do you, wait, what, what was the first part of that statement? Social Security distributes benefits with no regard for the general indigence of the recipients. The general, oh, I'm sorry, I don't know this word. The general indigence? Okay. Uh, economic need, I guess. Okay. Yeah, so, I mean, everyone gets paid the same. It, well, if we're talking, like, let's take seniors, for example. If Wait, it's I don't irrelevant. think everybody does get paid the same from Social Security. Doesn't it vary based on what you paid in in your lifetime? Uh, not to my knowledge. I am uh, I'm 99.999% sure that the Social Security payout that you get is, is calculated based on the average contributions that you've made through your lifetime. Uh... I'm pretty sure that's impossible, though, because the in the OSID uh, trustee report in 2018, they said uh, once 2034 rolls around, they're going to have to cut everyone by 25% uh, their benefits being paid out. Okay, so I'm 100% positive I'm correct. I, I know I'm right. Sorry, I, I have this problem where I, I don't act as confidently when I know something because I'm because I try not to. But I'm I'm no, I'm positive here. We can um we can look it up. Right here, let's look it up actually. Do Social Security payouts vary based on income. In 2016, the average social security income paid to a retired worker is $1,341 per month or 16,000 a year. However, monthly payments can vary widely based on each individual's work history. If you're a high income earner, your social security check will be bigger in retirement. Oh, I mean, well, there you go. I mean, it wouldn't change much because the, the variation, and so even with that, I mean, I didn't know that, but with the even with that, uh, the variation wouldn't account for much. Based well, on sure. Well, so it. I'm only what speaking was... to the first point because your first part about Social Security was that you said that it, when it pays people back, it's worthless because it doesn't take into account their current financial state, but it's not supposed to. Social Security pays back what you pay into it, right? Okay. Sure, but um, also, I mean, this is not discussing whether it's appropriate or not for the government to manage the uh, this private finance of the citizenry, but that, that's an irrelevant conversation. But what about the fact that social oh, security- Hold on one second. Sec. Hold on, hold on, wait, wait, one sec, sorry. Someone's looking at my door. Okay, sorry. All right, hello? Uh, Social Security, okay. my point was, it's funded mm -hmm. by the most regressive tax in America. Would you disagree with that? Um, the most regressive tax in America. Uh, the flat tax with a cap at 125K. Yeah, um, I guess it is, but it's like a retirement account. So, I mean, it's not necessarily, um, like I said, like you get back what you pay into it, so. Uh, that's... Uh, that's a even no i mean that's disingenuous to say though right because if you only ever got back what you paid into it it never run out of money though 
Well, yeah, but the problem is that people borrow against it. That's why it's running out of money. It's not running out of money because it's just bad, badly managed or whatever. It's running out of money because people will raid the Social Security account in order to pay for other things. That's my understanding of it. Well, I mean, yeah, I'll link you the, uh, the Social Security report. Um, so when Social Security was first implemented, there was three to one workers, right? So three workers supporting one beneficiary of Social Security. And uh, we're quickly approaching, you know, two workers supporting every one beneficiary. And where is it? Uh, I think it's this. Okay, but Social Security shouldn't be supported by other people. I thought it's supposed to be supported by the money that you put in. Well, how's the how's that supposed it sound to like work? It's a, well, so you put in money, the government holds on yeah. to money, and then it pays it back to you in retirement. Uh, well, no, it has to continually pay other people. What do you mean continually pay other people? Okay, wait. How did how did the first people who qualified? So when Social Security, when FDR initially made it back in thirty five, how did people who first uh, were eligible for it? Get money. I don't know. How did people first get money from Social Security? Let's let's click. Who was the first person to get Social Security benefits? A fellow named Ernest Ackerman got a payment for 17 cents in January 1937. This is a one-time lump sum payout, which was the only form of benefits paid during the startup period from January 1937 through December of 1939. Thought sure, but I was talking about the original people. Like, well, just he, not well, one he, was the he was the first person. Yeah. What I'm assuming happened was as the program started up, um, the people that retired first probably got back what they paid out, so it was probably... So, I mean, well, you said that people raid the Social Security Fund, and I mean, uh, the federal Social Security Fund isn't raided. In fact, it's there's a reserve fund, and it's invested mostly in government bonds. And okay, let's click. Why is Social Security yeah. running out of money? Let's check. I, li I mean, I linked you the uh, the uh, OSID uh, trustee report in which they clearly say why it's running out of money. Yeah, but you linked me a 270 page report. I can't. Well, no, just <laughs> read the introduction. Um, hold on, I'll just, I've got an Investopedia article. Let me read a little bit. I have heard that one of the problems is that because people live longer and longer, that people are starting to get more out of Social Security than what they put in. So in that case, maybe having a lot of older people now is bad yeah. for us. But... Also, since the wealthy have longer life expectancies, they just get more than poor people, right? Yeah, because they because get their of... maximum payout. Yeah. yeah. So apparently in two decades at its current rate the social security fund will approach bankruptcy um ways that they could um up in the age at which people can start collecting benefits increase taxes benefits cuts or the age at which workers are eligible for I'm gonna start creeping into the ones really. yeah okay wait what am i looking this up for what is our question social security needs to be reformed oh and sure that, yeah. or they can do other things to make up the shortfall so they can reduce the benefits paid out they can increase the retirement age or they could um, increase taxes and then put that towards social security i guess so they reduce, they, well, they have to either, I mean, in the report, it says they either have to reduce benefits by 20% to everyone mm -hmm. or increase payroll taxes by 9% okay. to uh, cover the cost. And uh, I mean, that's just another thing that Trump's uh, going for. And to What is Trump going for? What do you mean by going for? <laughs> well, Trump and the Republicans are now motioning to uh, cut Social Security. Yeah, that sounds fucking horrible. Why? Didn't you just agree that has to be cut to be saved? Do you think that me agreeing that Social Security might have some problems and it needs to get changed is the same thing as saying I think Social Security should be completely destroyed? <laughs> well, no, they're not trying to completely destroy it. They're trying to reform it. Which oh, is okay, okay. Yeah, that, that's benefit. yeah, that's different. Than what, or, I'm sorry, you made it sound like they were trying to get rid of it. No, no, I, I'm sorry. I was making a personal distinction between what I believe and what the Republicans are actually doing. The, so what is, um, what is Trump's... What is the Republicans... 
What is Trump trying to do for Social Security? Well, I mean, it isn't really Trump. It's the Republican Party. But on October 4th, they uh, issued a motion to the House. I, I forgot what it was exactly, but uh, to reduce benefits paid out by Social Security beyond, uh, I believe it's... I may be wrong on the, the number, though, of uh, what year it's uh, going. Um, wait, you cut out. What did you say? They, the Republicans submitted a bill yep. to try and reduce benefits that Social Security pays out in an attempt to keep it solvent. Yeah, I got that. Okay. Yeah. Why, uh, isn't that a good thing? Um, I mean, if it keeps it solvent, yeah, sure. That was one of the three solutions that we talked about that I, I'm assuming that your document showed and that one I just read, right? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Well, I mean, so what, what are we disagreeing about? So Social Security is going to be cut. To, uh, to keep it solvent. So, I mean, aren't the Republicans doing a good job of that then? Um, I mean, if that's their way of, of keeping it solvent and if that works, then sure. Okay, well, I mean, I guess let's move on to something else. So what about so tariffs, right? Okay. I'm against tariffs. You're also against tariffs, but here's the thing. Would you say you're against tariffs because they're a uh, major distortionary imposition on the private sector that aren't worth the uh, benefit they accrue? Well, I'm against tariffs because it's just a tax on people purchasing things and it seems like it just hurts our consumer's ability to do anything. I mean, products become more expensive if you own a business. Your cost of production becomes more expensive. Yeah. Well, you're not against all taxes on consumption, though, are you? Pro probably not. <laughs> no. So then it's not just since it's a tax on consumption. Yeah, I never said I was against it because it was a tax on consumption. But a tax specifically targeting foreign goods, it just seems dumb to me, I guess. I don't Sure. So, so it could be it'd be characterized as a major distortionary imposition on the private sector, right? Sure. And that it distorts it. So then, what's your view on capital taxation? Wait, can we be more specific? As in, like taxing so the business co owners. So corporate have? income tax. What's your um, position on that? Can you be more specific? Like, do I like? Do you want? Get rid of it? Would if do you? Why do you not have the same contempt for corporate income tax that you do for tariffs? I don't understand how corporate income tax is distortionary in the same way that tariffs are. Can you just draw the analogy for me? Uh, they distort economic outcomes. How? Uh, well, I'm not an economist, but I can link you uh, the Chicago polls and such. Uh, a tax on capital is effectively a tax on uh, productive investment, no? Okay. Yeah. So you have you have a quite a strong view that tariffs are bad, which I agree with, but you don't have the same view regarding capital taxes. No. Why not? I mean, to get, I, so I don't know what this poll in a vacuum is supposed to say. I mean, there might be some theoretical form of government where taxing capital this is capital and labor, um, but there might be a form of government where tax and capital and labor, we can not do that and raise money other ways, I guess. But this seems like a highly theoretical in a vacuum pull. Um, if we were to just get rid of all of our corporate taxation right now, it seems like you would continue to widen the gap between um, capital owners and laborers and that you would, um, I don't know how you would make up that those tax receipts. Where, where else would you get well, them? Well, no, no, no. You're, not, you're not actually creating another gap because ideally you could just remove Sorry, you can move the corporate tax burden onto the qualified or non-qualified dividend tax rate, couldn't you? Are you talking about like the normal, the ordinary income tax rate you pay or? Well, no, the dividend tax rate. We're getting, like, this might be true, but we're getting into some like very, very, very complicated and heavy tax code stuff. I, I don't feel comfortable and I don't feel like you have the level of knowledge needed to, to discuss. When we start getting well, like no. how, how we decide like where our tax money comes from, you're talking about the difference between like corporate tax rates versus moving this into ordinary income tax rates. We would also have to start talking about capital gains tax. Like th this all gets like really, really complicated. We're getting like hardcore into the weeds on tax policy. I don't know if this discussion is necessarily productive. Possibly not. But then, so if I link to a plurality of economists in America saying ca taxes on capital are heavily distortionary and that in fact, in the long run, the uh, the tax is zero. Would you not agree then? 
that uh, the problem is that like I, I would like... I would need more context for that poll. Um, there is an NPR program mm. a long time ago that um, I think there are like four there are four or five types of uh, fiscal policies that we have that every single like, economist agrees are bad. I don't remember the name of this program was. It was pretty interesting though. But like every economist ubiquitously agrees that like this type of policy is bad and we should get rid of it. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Actually, it was it was six, and one of them was yeah yeah it's possible. The and then tax. yeah, and some of them had to do with real estate. So like these are things that like might be good ideas in in a vacuum, but the way that our current infrastructure and funding system is set up, I don't know if it would work right now. Like we couldn't just like cut this one thing and now, oh look, this is like a much better thing now. Like you have to enact another policy or do or find ways to do things a little bit differently. Um, so yeah, I'm, so I'm not comfortable. Oh yeah, somebody's linking in chat. Yeah, so I'm not comfortable saying like, oh yeah, we should get rid of the corporate tax rate as it is right now. It might be possible that in a better economy, or, or when I say better, like where things are a lot different in terms of government policy and everything, that maybe it makes sense to get rid of certain tax things. Um, but I, I don't think right now, I feel like just getting rid of all corporate tax rates and then um, I, I, I don't, yeah, I don't know if that's a good idea or not. It seems like not a good idea. But well, if, if a plurality of economists agree that ta uh, taxes on capital should be either reduced or eliminated, isn't that indicative of anything about well, policy prescription? Not really, because what, what I'd be curious of is would they agree that right now, if we were to destroy all taxes on capital, and leave everything. Not destroy. I said. I said reduce or eliminate. Okay, as... re reduce or eliminate. I'm sorry. That sounds like destroy to me. But okay, if we were to reduce or eliminate all taxes, all corporate income tax, and leave all else equal, I don't. Would most economists agree with that? I mean, I guess if they would, then then sure. But I, I would be very interested to see. But again, like we're getting into the weeds. Like this is a very very nuanced discussion on tax policy, tax receipts, and where income comes from and how income is. Well, no, my, my central point is that so. You, you correctly observe that tariffs are extremely distortionary on the private sector, yet they, they also raise a considerable amount of income, don't they? Like a 15% tariff on, what's it called, 200 billion uh, worth of steel imports? That's um, a I'm not actually, I'm not even sure if they do raise income once you take into account how much is lost from the economy um, in terms of people uh, consuming or producing less. Yeah. Yeah, so it, it, the macroeconomic feedback effects cause a net uh, net increase in zero tax revenue because of uh, the distortionary effects of the economy. But this also was observed <laughs> with taxes on capital by the researchers Chamberlain Judd in 1986. They found that the long-run tax on capital is actually zero. And I'll link you the, a paper from 1987 which uh, checked if that uh, result was correct. Yeah. You can, Obviously, since we're both laymen, we can only read the abstracts of these. Why is the long run tax on capital income zero? What does this have to do with anything? Well, because you said that the increase in the there's no there's no increase in federal funds seen by uh, tariffs. They don't actually raise any, which is oh. correct. Okay. Yeah, so I'm saying the exact same thing applies to capital. Okay. Let, okay. Let's say that this might be true. What What does this have to do with anything? Well, that you're being hypocritical by be, not being fully against capital as you are against tariff. Okay. Do you understand that like not having massive tariffs is like much easier to do than um than than getting rid of all the corporate tax? Are you start saying in terms of political pragmatism or something? Um, else? Or I think in terms of like where the money comes from and everything. I, I I could be wrong. This is like a really complicated topic. I don't, I don't know if I'm fully capable, and it doesn't seem like I don't know if you're fully capable either. Is this like I? I well, I'm a bit I'm a bit unsettled though by this whole uh, you know kind of ten thousand what? Views. Not ten thousand views, but like one thousand views. I'm a bit unsettled. Oh sure. Views. Yeah. Um. I mean, I don't know. I would have to um. Like, it seems like doing or not doing tariffs is something that is very easy to do right now, but getting rid of all corporate taxes seems like something that you would have to, like, restructure the whole tax code. For. Well, no, number one, it's not all corporate taxes, and that kind of frames my side in a really bad, like, way, saying we want to reduce all corporate taxes. I'm just saying the economists have concluded that the long-run tax on capital income and capital is therefore terribly distortionary, and... You you'd have this. You should have the same opinion as of that as you should of tariffs. Well, no, because tariffs imply a lot more than just corporate taxes, right? Tariffs also damage our relationship with people around the world as well, like and can have, you know, other sorts of detrimental. Are you saying corporate taxes don't? When Ireland, I mean, isn't that the whole point of corporate tax competition, where you have countries like Ireland and uh, the tax havens extremely lowering their corporate tax to uh, gain corporations to move uh, move there. 
Yeah, but th again, this is a really, really, really complicated topic. If you want, I can do research on this and come back and discuss it, but we, this is an incredibly complicated and nuanced topic. Like, for, we will never be competitive with Ireland's tax rates. That country is literally like a tax... No, no, I never said... No, no, I never said we'll be competitive with Ireland. I said... You said that the difference between tariffs and capital income taxes is that tariffs damage relationships with countries. Okay. And capital income taxes don't. But that's incorrect. Because, I mean, also... Wait wait wait, 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 let me just make sure I understand yeah. this. So you're telling me that putting tariffs on the um, imports, uh, it doesn't affect our relationship with other countries, or it does just as much? I no, I never said that. I or, 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 or just, let me finish, please. So you're saying that okay, putting sure. tariffs on the imports of other, or I should say the exports of other countries, that that will impact our relationships with those countries the exact same way that lowering or raising our corporate tax rates will? I, no, I didn't say the exact same way. I said not the exact well, same, but in a similar way. You're like in a similar way. Yeah, sure. Okay, but I the, totally well, disagree with is, that. But this in... is no, this is substantiated because the United Kingdom, France, and Germany, their finance ministers sent a letter to Steve Mnuchin saying that if Trump were to cut the tax code, it could result in a trade war. I, if you want, I can uh, get a citation for that. Sure. Here you go. See, so, yeah, it was the it was the finance ministers of Britain, Germany, France, Italy, and Spain who wrote the letter to Steve Mnuchin. Can, do you have? Is there a way where I can read this whole article? Uh, what do you mean? Like, it says only subscribers have unlimited access to premium articles. Oh. Mm. Because, it look, because what I'm guessing, I'm just going to take a guess because I haven't read the article. My guess is that it says Philip Hammond sides with EU to demand Donald Trump drops, drops tax reforms that risk trade war. It sounds like this is probably not going to be about changing a corporate income tax, but rather it's going to be about changing tax codes that we all had an agreement we wouldn't do based on WTO rulings that would open a can of worms for people to do whatever they want. No, wait, the WTO doesn't regulate corporate Okay, well, rates. and the third thing that you, that in the article you sent me, the third paragraph said, the minister said the proposed changes would contravene World Trade Organization rules. Yeah, so this, this article is not only talking about the uh, corporate... Uh, Corporate income tax, but also the tariffs. But wait, I'm trying to get you a link in which uh, you can read the entire. Well, wait, if it's talking about tariffs, that's my whole point. No, 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 no but oh, no, it was it was specifically referring. Also, Wikipedia cites this under the CCGA, sorry, JA, of a uh, of foreign objection. This this very article as a as a citation. As a citation for what? That corporate uh, corporate tax competition could lead to a trade war. Okay, can I, I? I need to see that somewhere. Or, yeah, sure. Or actually, if somebody could find me this article, hold on. Let me see if I can get like an un. Here's the uh, here's Wikipedia, by the way. As I mean, you know, as an unreliable source as it is, I guess. Okay, so reading the first paragraph, the finance ministers of the five largest European economies wrote a letter to U.S. Treasury Secretary. Expressing concern that the tax reforms could trigger a trade war as they would violate World Trade Organization rules and distort international trade. So, like, it seems like it's not just about raising or lowering a rate, but it has to do with, just with violating rules that have already been agreed upon, which means if you violate some, then other people will violate others, right? Sure, but the main argument we were having was that you said that tariffs, uh, the difference between capital, one difference between capital taxes and tariffs is that tariffs damage the uh, our foreign relations with other countries uh, with the implication that capital incomes, sorry, capital taxes, but they quite clearly do. Yeah, the capital taxes might. I'm not sure. What I'm saying is that it's like a really complicated conversation. I don't think you can just get rid of capital tax rates and like leave everything. No, again, stop saying get rid of capital Okay, I'm tax sorry. Rates. Severely reduce or eliminate. That was your word, wasn't it? Didn't you say... So well, no, no, no. I said, I said reduce or eliminate. I said economists as a plurality agree that t corporate taxes should be either reduced or eliminated. Okay. So like so what would all the tax burden be shifted onto um onto what your your ordinary income or well no not to say I'm just saying that no so the original point of this was for me to highlight a what I saw to be a hypocrisy between you 
saying tariffs were heavily bad for the economy, as you know, because it's a bad tax, but not having the same position on capital taxes. And then when you say capital taxes, again, you just mean corporate income tax? You don't mean like capital gains or whatever, right? Well, all, all of these are really capital taxes. But the main capital tax is corporate income taxes. Okay, doesn't that corporate income tax take the place of some other types of ordinary income taxes? Well, I mean, it raises revenue for the federal government, yeah. Yeah, but like if we were to take all the corporate taxes or whatever and just get rid of that and just shift that over to the ordinary income, wouldn't you essentially be making the same money or something? Uh, by ordinary income, are you just talking about income tax or? Yes. Yeah, sure. If, if you shifted the entirety of the corporate tax onto the ordinary income tax, yeah. So you, how the fuck would you do that? In a ca so as somebody that files business taxes, which I do, how the fuck, th this seems like it would severely fuck somebody like me over. Like, so how do all of your business deductions or everything work if you can't show any income on the balance sheet of a large corporation and now all of that is, so for instance, let's say I own a big company and I just spent $50 million on a new fleet of vehicles. Who gets the write-off on that if I have no corporate income now? If I can't show any corporate income on my balance sheet to deduct business expenses from, how does that what? spend money? Yeah. Okay, I have write-offs that are associated with me conducting a business. Do you agree with that? Yeah, you're deducting from your taxes at the end of the year. Sure. So let's say that my corporation doesn't show income or whatever, because we, we now it all just goes to the individuals, I guess. Or, well, I mean, this is this is ridiculous, though. You're saying that because I, well, I cited economists, a possible economist suggestion to how to uh, better structure the tax code. You then take, you know, kind of really weird example, saying that with the well, in this hypothetical example, the elimination of the corporate tax would then result with corporations not being able to what announce how much they made. No, how would you do business deductions? Well, why would you need to do business deductions if the corporate tax rates eliminated? Because you wanted to shift all of the tax burden from the business to the individuals, but now the individuals can't get write-offs for business expenses. Sure. Well, no, wait. Okay, let's Recent say my business makes $100 million. Like, yeah. But I spend $50 million on vehicles or whatever, right? Yeah. Now my company doesn't make that, but instead, it, 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 what, it flows through to the ordinary income of, of all the people in the corporation? And now, how do they get, like, credit for paying $50 million towards vehicles or whatever, or towards, like, capital reinvestment? Like, Well, no, no, I'm not a, oh, okay, okay, I see the problem here. Uh, I'm not saying that the entirety of the corporate tax burden would be moved onto other tax, uh, tax forms, such as the income tax. I'm saying some of it would, with the rest just being, well, essentially... So it'd be a net net decrease in federal income. And again, I'm not I'm not the one. I'm just a layman uh, re, uh, citing things that I read from uh, economists. Okay, I'll do more research on that, and then we can come back and discuss it because I I don't I'm not I don't feel like I'm fully equipped to answer this, and I don't I'm not understanding it I guess right now. So yeah, sure. I'll I'll bank that one. Okay. Do you want to move on to something else? Yeah, hit me up. Okay, hold on, because I got other things I have to do. Pretty simple. We'll come back and have a, a second thing. Hit me up with your last your big killer point. All right. Income, okay, the other ones, uh, you know, I'm pretty weak on because, you know, I'm a bit nervous here. But one thing I'm confident on, you believe, I assume, uh, income has stagnated since the 1980s, uh, right? Well, I think that um, income versus productivity seems to not be going that well, and that a much larger share of income seems to be going to capital owners rather than laborers. Right. So, uh, I mean, do we have time to do the beta, so you've got to go? Sure, hit me up with it. Are you going to link me the Okay, so poster? so first I'll link you a uh, I'll link you a poll from economists saying that that's hit, that the 9% stat of stagnation of uh, household median income growth heavily understates the amount of growth that fa American families have sustained since the 1980s. And um, I mean I could get into actual like criticisms if you want of uh, the uh, the cumulative increase in real U.S. median household income since 1980 substantially understates how much better people are off and the median American household are now economically compared. Well, what, probably yeah. it's like the types of goods available to you um, are better even if you can't necessarily afford more? That like a well, no, no. The, Min the Minneapolis Fed and the St. Louis Fed both agreed that the way the Bureau of Labor Statistics uh, gathers the numbers to prove uh, what to cite the household median income stagnation is fundamentally and that the statistic isn't representative of reality. Sure. Can you link me an article with somebody talking about this?
Yes, sure. Chart one, median household income stagnates, chart two, while per person income rises. What is this supposed to tell me? Well, I mean, what does that mean? I mean, just you're scrolling. Okay, just scroll to the bottom. At the oh, well, that's, I'm sorry, I'm only asking because that's what you linked me. The link went directly to that. Oh, what? It did? Yeah, sorry. I mean, okay, well, just the whole thing. Well, just scroll to the bottom. The Minneapolis Fed concluded that uh, income had actually risen 44 to 62%. From 1980 to what 20, and well, I mean, the first problem is so the site, the site, the stat is median household income is stagnant since uh, 1980. Would you agree with that? Or yeah, I guess that? so. Like I, these, these claims are not interesting to me, and they may be right or may be wrong, but I don't care. All right. And that the standard of living of middle America has stagnated over the past generation is common. I don't think that. I guess people might say that. I mean, I'm pretty sure the standard of living in middle America has gotten better. I don't think anybody intelligent disagrees with that. Um, and a I mean, that's virtually all income growth over the past three decades bypassed middle America and accrued almost entirely. These seem like pretty easy claims to refute. I don't think all income growth over the past three decades has bypassed middle America. I thought that the main concerns were that, like, as a share. So, like, if you were to Google, for instance, or look up, like, the, the difference between, like, the share of income earned by capital versus labor, that that has grown and grown and grown. That that's at, like, 84, 86 percent or some shit as compared to what it used to be like prior to like 1970 i thought that was the big claim right. like uh, so so and also like what, what would you say like the productivity versus the actual compensation has uh has not kept well up. sure that productivity and compensation have tracked each other but that indicator is doing worse and worse as of recently that like it still might be tracking each other but um it, you would expect to see a uh, median income rise more than it has well, the first problem is that median income isn't the entire story, is it? Because labor compensation, labor compensation encompasses far more than just income, right? You've got the pension plans and insurance plans, just to name that. Yeah, this sounds like a Charlie Kirk strategy. I would have to go and read if this is actually real or not. I would have to, I would have to, re I, I'm familiar with this. I, it sounds like way too stupid to be true, but you're going to make the claim that, oh, well, no, actually people are getting paid way more in stocks and everything these days than they weren't in the past. Well, no, 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 that, no. no. It's in health insurance plans. Would you? Yeah. That, that, okay. Hold on, please. Oh God, please stop weaseling. Okay, that's exactly what you're saying. You're saying that other forms of compensation, non way I use stocks, but clearly this could be a million other things. It could either be healthcare, it could be stocks, it could be retirement, 401k, IRA. You're you're going to make the claim that oh well, no, workers are earning way more. It's just in non wage things. It's actually other forms of compensation. It's going to be the argument that you're going on to make, right? Uh. Not fully. Well, it's well, it's a multitude of arguments. So I don't have like a catch made. for you here. You can say yes. Okay, wait. I can okay say something that you agree with. How about this? Okay. Since 1980, family household size has been decreasing. I don't know if that's true or not, but but wait. Re okay, wait. I'll I'll say it one more time. The size of households since 1980 was larger than it is in 2018. The size you don't of households. I, I don't know. Well, let's just look it up. Just we can find out. Household. Wait, what do you mean? Household is in people in a family. Are you saying people are having more children nowadays? Than that in the might past? not be the only thing that contributes to family size. For instance, let's say in the past people were having more children, but single fathers were leaving the mother every time. That would be a way which people could have more children, but then household size could be decreasing. I don't. I don't know. Let's just. It's a, that should be an easy number to find, right? Yeah, it is an easy number to find. Okay, household size, United States. Expand statistic. Okay, it seems like since 1960 that household size has been decreasing, which is what I think I would expect. Not by much, but it has. So in 1960, the average household was 3.67 people. In um, 2017, it was 3.14 people. This is average number of people per family. I wonder if that's households. I'm not sure. Do you have a better? Well, households and family are used interchangeably in this context. Okay. So. You don't see a problem with that. So if it's saying median household incomes have been stagnating when households themselves have been decreasing. Oh, well, let, let, let me suppose an example to you. Suppose there was a nation with 100 households, right? And each household had a combined. Okay, I don't need, I don't need the example. You can just use the. Okay, anyway. So what you're saying is if we have 100 everyone, households and then they decrease by half, but they all earn or they have like half. No, no, everyone divorced. 
They say hundred households. No, 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 can I, can I just finish? I know exactly what you're gonna say. Let me just finish. Oh, you're, sure. you're saying if you have a hundred households and then all of a sudden the next year ha those households are half the size, but they're in the same amount of income. You're saying, wow, that yeah. feel positively, even though the household income stay the same, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, sure, that would be true. So okay. So let me let me okay. Um, share of income, capital versus labor. I don't think anybody intelligent. Okay, so like if you're trying to get me to defend the argument that everybody in the United States is in the exact same spot they were economically 50 years ago, that argument is beyond fucking stupid. I would never defend that argument. Maybe there are people that do. That sounds really fucking stupid to me. Um, the, the, the problem was that my understanding for non-stupid people, um, not, I'm not saying you're stupid, Rosa, but I, whoever's saying that like everything is exactly the same or worse than it was 50 years ago is obviously stupid. My understanding of the problem was that if you were to look at the share of income generated by laborers versus capital, that the capital has been earning larger and larger and larger chunks of, of the income over the past like 40, 50 years. And that's the problem. That even though middle America, whatever, is improving, I mean, you kind of have to be as you go through time, especially as good as certain luxury goods that are gonna become cheaper, but the, the share of, of earnings of, of capital has increased so much that that's what people were complaining about. That, that even though productivity is increasing and wages are kind of increasing, they're not tracking it as well as they should be. That was my understanding of it. Are you familiar with this argument at all or no? No, I haven't. Because the main thing, uh, are you familiar with secular talk? And I assume you're familiar with the Young Turks. Um, yeah, I'm familiar with them. What about? Okay, all these guys make the same leftist claim that uh, wages have been stagnating since 1980. And I thought, I, you know, I just assumed you also subscribed to it. Uh, my apologies, I guess. Okay, yeah, no problem. Here, so this is kind of, well. I mean, like in a in a way that's. I mean, you can argue that, that you would say that they're stagnating compared to what they should be. I mean, they're still increasing. Well, the fine should be. What okay, is, what so be? here is the labor share of output in the non-farm business sector, first quarter 1947 through third quarter of 2016. Yeah. So this is what I'm familiar with, that, that, that and educated people make this argument. So everybody is growing, sure, but the people at the top are growing so much more. I guess you hear this when Bernie says, like, the 1% or whatever, that this is the problem. That um, when you look at these graphs, you look at the labor share of of um uh, of like the the income earned is decreasing so much compared to what it used to be that that's like the uh, thing that people complain about the most. Uh, so then, what would you extrapolate this to? What's the what's the what's the uh, what would you that say? We, that that being probably? a cap that owning capital is far yeah. too favorable to the capital owner these days, and that we have to find ways to bring some of those savings or earnings back to the laborer. The capital wait, wait, isn't that just advances in productivity of capital sure that yeah companies? sure so so technology progress so that capital will become more efficient and now it's like bad for the workers yes because they don't get an equal share yeah okay this this may sound like completely unrelated but what do you believe do you believe companies have an intrinsic social uh, responsibility to the republic um if we if you want to go down to the like the epistemic level no well no no, no. i'm just saying like do you think yeah, I think, yeah, have... you should. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yeah. So uh, what about the uh, the statement that the only responsibility uh, corporations have is to their shareholders? What would you think of that statement? In a perfect world where the government could c control the the regulations and the incentives for, for that stuff, then that could be okay. But um, I mean, the government has to be there to do it, right? What, wait, what do you mean by that, though? So, so, I, I, so again, uh, the statement of the only responsibilities corporations have is to their to their shareholders, those okay. who own them, obviously. And they have no other responsibility, like actual responsibility. So they don't have the responsibility to provide jobs. Yeah, I mean, that's probably true, sure, yeah? Yeah, so what, what, why, so do corporations have a responsibility to share the technological, well, share the income that has a- I guess as an entity themselves, no. Via technological, but then you, you say it as if it's a bad thing. Well, well yeah, I think it's it a bad, bad thing. thing. Yeah, I think that the government needs to step in. That's why I said something has to be done to redistribute some of those productivity winnings back to the laborers. Yeah, the government would have to do that. I guess companies can't do it themselves, sure. So you'd have, I mean, this is such an interesting argument. I've actually never heard this before. So you would say that due to the increase in technology, which has caused capital to become far more productive than labor, now that has to be redistributed to the workers because it, well, why, why should it be redistributed first? Because it, if it was a way better society because capital is so fucking powerful today compared to what it used to be. Sure. But that doesn't justify why it should be redistributed. What do you mean by justify? Well, well, uh, I think that's a good question actually. So 
Sure, because we're presupposing so our you moral said systems here completely. Better, when you better, say that, right? Yeah, so, so you said better, better societal outcomes. The fact... Wait, hello? Hello? Oh, sorry, okay, you're cut off for a second. You said better... Okay, you said, yeah. yeah, you said that it, uh, redistributing the, uh, the earnings of capital would lead to better societal outcomes. What sure. So what I mean is that if I had a... Let's say that I'm a capitalist, okay? I, well, fuck, what would I say? A capital owner, okay? Let's say that I have a factory, and in this factory, I can produce $1 million worth of goods, but I have to, or I can sell $1 million worth of goods, but I have to pay out $700,000 worth of labor. Let's say that productivity increases such that this whole factory can now be ran by a single engineer. So now I can sell $1 million worth of goods, but I only need $100,000 worth of labor. My ownership as a capital owner has increased substantially. The amount of income that will be generated in this economy is massively going to me, and now the labor force, the labor side of things, is earning far less income because they're not a capital owner. That seems to me like it would create a lot of bad shit in the future, like the fucking proletariat revolution or whatever all the lefties talk, you know, cry about whenever they look at like the share of income that goes to the top 1% versus the bottom. That owning capital is more and more and more profitable, which leads to more and more entrenched wealth, which leads to less um, class mobility, right? Economic mobility. It just seems like a bad thing to have from my point of view. So you, you, you said in that, in that example you gave, um, the laborers earning less. Now, are you saying less as in nominal, or I assume you're meaning percentage less? Less as in a share of the GDP, I guess. Yeah, sure. Share of the all the output. Yeah. But if labor, if labor income, or well, if labor compensation is steadily rising with their productivity, why would that be an issue then? That's such a red herring, and that's so disingenuous. Um, let's say, for instance, that um, let's say, for instance, that uh, that that. Like, just because your income is rising doesn't necessarily mean that that's a good thing. So, for instance, let's say that I bought, uh, let's say that I bought a, a stock for $100, you know, 30 years ago, and that stock grew 10% over the past 100 years or whatever. Like, you wouldn't say to me, well, hey, your stock grew, didn't it? Why are you complaining? I would say, no, that sucks because my stock grew so little in comparison to the rest of the market. That's the arguments that people make with labor. It's like, is labor income and median earnings and whatnot growing? Yeah, it is a little bit, but the massive amount of the gains seem to be going to the, the 80 Six percent share of the market that's going towards what? own capital. That seems to be the problem. It's not a little bit. I mean, here, look at this chart I just linked you. Real product compensation has followed net output per hour. So it's not a little bit. Net product, the laborers are being compensated fairly, as they always have been, for their. Yeah, but the the problem is that the share of income earned. So like. Uh, an, so, for instance, let's say that I own a factory, going back to that same thing, that produces a million dollars worth of output, but now I only yeah. have to pay a hundred thousand dollars in labor in order to um, in, in order to earn that or whatever, right? I'm not saying yeah. that. Um, I'm not saying that. That, that, that engineer is being shortchanged, that engineer is being ripped up. It's possible that he's actually earning more than he would have been in a prior environment. What I'm saying is that the overall share of money being given to capital owners is much larger today than it was, you know, 40 or 50 years ago compared to the average right. to, to labor. I, and I mean, like, we can, I can go and find graphs on this if this is what you want to look at, but like, so. Yeah, sure. I mean, I, I, yeah, I know that, I know the set you just referenced, so it's fine. Sure. Um, so then we're, so you're making the argument then that. It's this, better this, for like, this is something like over be. over countries even like this is just like so share of national income paid to workers um, like labor has been this is like a thing that's going on in a lot of different countries it's not just the United States but yeah okay sorry go ahead I mean again though this if the if they're getting compensated if the workers are getting compensated as they always have at the same rate why does it then matter that the capital is uh, being more productive and I don't want to discuss like who can use the capital you know, the income from the capital more effectively. Well, That's because it seems time. like right now we have a lot of problems in our country that could be fixed by social spending. So things like education is fucked. Things like our health care is what, fucked. What, so wait, regarding the education thing, I want to latch on to that. Educa the U.S. spends more education than like every other country in the OEC OECD combined. Yet it has, it literally has less than the OECD PISA score. Meet, but does worse than the average country in the OECD in terms of educative outcomes. Okay. And, so throwing money at the educative problem just doesn't doesn't work. I'm not saying just throw money at it. I mean, I guess that's what I implied. Sure. You, you say increase social spending, and that's I, I mean, I, it, okay. So what do we what do we do with things like um, so like any publicly funded program that we can't fund? So you're talking about like problems with social security or things like infrastructure, like. It, oh fuck! Actually, I don't even know if I want to give that argument because we spend more money on income than other countries do. 
um, that, or that we spend more money on education than other countries do. I'm not actually sure if that's even a fair statistic. Fuck. Wait, 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 what do you mean, Stan? What do you mean? We, what do you mean? Sorry? I don't know if that education spending is a real stat um, or if it's or if it's not, if it's being hidden. What I mean, I just took that number from the OECD. Which I understand, that, but like, if you look at aggregate, if you look at spending on education in the United States as a whole and say, look, we spend way more than other countries, that might be like, that you might be obfuscating things where, well, we spend a fuck ton of money on our really good schools that actually do produce good outcomes, but you ignore like the schools in like, um, in like Boston or not Boston, I'm sorry, in like, um, in like Chicago or DC or like these more fucked areas, right? You're ignoring the fact that those schools get like almost no money, right? I don't know if that's true or not. This is a really out there criticism though. Cause I mean, if, if what you're saying, I, I mean, I intrinsically kind of trust larger authorities such as the OECD on these kind of things. If what you're saying would be substantiated, it just throws the, the entire like stats out of out of the uh, you know board. Okay, but literally earlier you just told me that that whole compensation thing is actually all bullshit because actually we're getting paid more in health insurance. So no, but the difference here, the difference here is that the Fed is criticizing the Bureau of Labor Statistics, and then we have, a, you know, I'm you know we're both laymen here criticize. Well, you're criticizing the OECD. You don't think there's a difference there? I, I'm not sure. I would just have to look at the. Um... Right. No, no, I'm not saying in terms of who's correct here. I'm saying in terms of authority. When one institution questions another, it's far different from a person questioning. In, in... So, like, because I'm just looking at this like, real quickly. So, as a share of its economy, the U.S. spends more than the average country in the survey. In 2010, the U.S. spent 7.3% of its GDP on education compared with 6.3% average of other OECD countries. But that yeah. average doesn't tell me anything. Do you understand why or no? I mean, yeah, I understand what you're getting at. But if what you're saying was substantiated... Well, what would be the point of collecting any of these education spending? It's entirely irrelevant under that. Uh, well, maybe the maybe the schools that we spend a lot of money on do really well compared to other schools, and that if we spent more money in the other schools, which would increase our overall GDP, you know, expenditure on education, maybe that would be good, right? I think these are the. I think what you're saying is theoretically possible, but near impossible to substantiate. Well, no, you would look at like spending per district, maybe. I, like I'm sure there are some numbers where I look at like spending per district versus. Outcomes, United States. Like, I'm sure that these numbers have to exist. I'm sure I could find them somewhere. That, um, like, I, I, it's an anecdote, but like, for my own city, for instance, right? If you live in a shitty part of Omaha, you're going to like fucking Omaha North or some shit. The houses there are shit. The income tax is shit. Those schools are fucking garbage. Yeah, I, mean, I know about the property taxes thing. Um, sure. So, like, this seems to point to the fact that, like, yeah, we can spend a lot of money on some schools and they produce better outcomes as a result. Um, like, so, yeah, I mean, I don't think that's that far off, but it might be. Maybe it's really dumb. I don't know. I'd have to look at the numbers for it. Cool. And then, I mean, I'd actually agree with you with the property taxes thing. Um, but is, that's an argument from my side, isn't it? Because with property taxes uh, being used for education funding, that only further entrench, entrenches the wealth strata, does it? No, no. It's, I understand what you're saying. It's not necessarily an argument for your side, though, because maybe the massive spending that goes on in the rich districts produces outcomes that are actually highly favorable. So what we just need to do is boost spending in the poor districts, not take money from the rich districts and then put them in the poor districts. But something like that might not actually be good because it might hurt the outcomes in the wealthier districts. So what I'm saying is it might be maybe an overall increase would be positive. I don't actually know. I'm not sure. I would have to do more research on education spending. I'm just saying right. I don't think you have to looking at like 7% of our GDP is spent on education. Therefore, we should have better outcomes. I don't know what the distribution of that spending is like. And I don't know if you can actually peg good outcomes onto good um, spending. That might actually not even be true. But this, I, I mean, I, I, I see your concerns, but this becomes a bit, a bit ridiculous because then it's impossible to compare the OECD collected stats without looking at every country that they see and then seeing how they also distribute their money. Isn't it? Yeah, education is complicated. I mean, what? It's be impossible then to ever have. No, a it wouldn't be impossible at all. No, yeah, what you would do is you would have to have seen. Both sides would have. Both sides would have to know how the countries they're discussing distribute education spending roughly, regarding. Yeah, of course. Yeah, of course you would have to know that. What do you mean? Yeah. You think that's impossible? You don't to do. Well, I don't think it's impossible, but uh, you don't think that the uh, make make the barrier for entry for that conversation, like near extremely. Yeah, of course. The barrier for entry for all of these conversations is extremely high. They're not simple solutions. It's the same thing with the tax stuff. It's not a matter of just like getting rid of some tax things and everything fixes up. All of these conversations are So what's what okay, then tell me, why did the OECD put out the report? If if I don't know, you would have to ask the authors of the OECD report. 
quite a maybe to prove that maybe to, it could be that distribution is a problem or it could be that more spending needs to happen in certain districts i'm not sure i don't know why why the oecd put out the report you would have to ask the guys that, that... i mean I, I read the oecd report and there was no mention regarding distribution of uh, education funds it's okay just wait says, can you link me that report much... link it to me right the oecd which well, i mean the one regarding uh, education spending hello what hello Hello, can you hear me? Yeah, what? Oh, yeah, I heard you. You want the OECD report regarding public spending on sure. education? Okay, one sec. Give me your heads up. I got to leave in like five minutes too, okay? Just as a final. Yeah. I'll read this. But I'll write some of these down and look at it more for future conversations then. Yeah, also I'll try and come more prepared. I mean, I'm pretty aged this debate. because no, it's uh, all good, buddy. Uh, yeah. No, I mean, I'm actually being pretty shit here. I actually had a, a big Google Doc of uh, arguments, but I haven't actually used it. So it was that because, uh, yeah, I was, I've was i gone off script pretty bad. Also, to bring it back to our main conversation, I haven't heard of like the Republicans' big overhaul for education either, other than the Betsy DeVos stuff that we both agree was kind of a failure. Well, I mean, Betsy DeVos is, well, oh, wait, so how far can I use slurs? Can I use like mentally disabled slurs? Or I, is that no, a... let's just be safe and let's just- Okay, Betsy DeVos is a very dumb person. Then why did Trump appoint her? Uh, good question. Okay. I mean, Obama appointed Robert Reich as uh, labor minister. Not labor minister, sorry, yeah, labor guy. We're I mean, not talking people... about Obama, though, are we? Yeah, but I mean, we're discussing why Why do people appoint... Uh, well, no, you know, we were stupid... discussing whether or not Trump was doing a good job. So it seems like the onus is on you to defend Trump, not attack Obama. Well, I mean, that's just one one uh, one part of the Trump administration, isn't it? With the Betsy DeVos support. Well, yeah, it is. But I mean, like of the few topics that you brought up to show what Trump is doing well, that was one of the ones that you elected to bring up, which leads me to think there's not very much positive going on. If Okay, what about the uh, Supreme Court picks that Trump's put in? Yeah, I think regardless it's fucking of horrible. Of <laughs> I don't like yeah, conservatives on the Supreme Court. Agree with them. They, he he has uh, implemented the conservative agenda, hasn't he? Well, yeah, I mean, there's not much you could do to stop the president from doing that. I mean, what? I mean, good job, I guess. Well, I mean, that's not true. I guess you could stop the president from doing that, but. Uh, not if you're in the minority. No, you'd need 51 in the Senate. But yeah, I mean, he did do the thing that he was elected to do um, because literally nobody can stop him from doing that thing, sure. So you'd, so you'd say then the the judicial ethos of Gorsuch and Kavanaugh is inferior to what you know a liberal would... Uh, um, I don't know. I guess I'm just scared about certain civil rights being eroded. So things like um, Roe v. Wade. Although I guess it's kind of like... Um, this goes to like more fundamental parts of our country or whether or not like I even like the democracy system or the constitution or whatever, I'm not sure. Well, sure, but I mean, democracy is the best, the best uh, you know, system we have. Well, maybe I don't know that, but... Well, you want a dictatorship to come in in which it can just be easily taken over by fascist or communist. I mean, I don't know. We sit here right now and we say the democracy is the best system we have, but if in 50 years everybody has to move inland because our fucking glaciers are flooding all of our coastal lands, I don't know if we're going to sit here and say, well, democracy is the best system. I don't fucking know. I don't know, man. I mean, uh, so that's a bit hyperbolic, though, right? Because, I mean, no, so global should... warming is not hyperbolic. I think it's a huge... No, no, no. You said uh, 50 years we'll have to move inland. That's hyperbolic. It's okay, not, I, I know I'm sorry, that before. particular, maybe in 50 years we won't, I don't actually know. I've seen things that say maybe we do, maybe, maybe in 50 years we don't, but like the fact that like climate is increasing around the planet and our both our, ec our economy and our system of government is incapable of addressing it, I would say are really fucking bad points against us that like might lead to like total fucking extinction of the planet. I would say that's like a pretty bad outcome that if- I mean, yeah, beyond 2100, like uh -huh. the world becomes fucked, sure. I was just taking, uh, I was just making a point of contention out of saying 50 years. Sure. Okay. Maybe 50 years is hyperbolic, but 82, since he said 2100, 82 is not hyperbolic. So maybe I should say 82 years. I don't know what the acceptable amount of years for the destruction. Yeah, but how would a, how would a dictatorship, like, you know, well, not China's not a dictatorship. It's more of a, you know, kind of oligarchy. How would an oligarchy of China, like, do any better? In regards to global warming, because you can you have you can have a planned economy. You can tell your people like, hey, by the way, you're doing this shit now. This is illegal. Fuck off. So planned economies have perfectly shown not to be efficient. So, 
I don't know if efficiency matters when you're talking about things like climate change. Also, you can have mixed economies as well. Well, you're not seriously making. You, you said planned economies. You didn't say mixed economies. Okay, I'm sorry, economies. man. I'm sorry. In a planned economy, you would be able to address things like climate change more better than you could in a in a in a in a free economy. Do you agree with that? What about a cap and trade? Wait, you, what about cap and trade or carbon taxes? You yeah, those would work as well. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So then your argument of a planned economy or an oligarchy. I didn't say a planned economy is the best. You said, how could somebody think like a dictatorship or whatever be superior to ours? And I said, well, a planned economy yeah. could address climate change better than a free, which is absolutely true. In a planned economy, you could literally say, by the way, no more electricity. And there you go. I win the argument. And so I'm just saying, it, yeah, hypothetically, a planned economy would be. Now, if you're talking about the best way to address it, obviously, I'm not going to tell you that a planned economy or I generally probably don't think that because I am a massive capitalist, which I'm sure you know, and everybody in my chat knows. So like, yeah, I don't think that a planned economy is the best way going forward, but some form of like government incentives um, that could be made more powerful with a non-democratic government would probably be a better way to address climate change or could potentially be. That's all I was saying. I don't think that it's necessarily good to have a dictatorship. I just don't know if our system right now is addressing it the way that we want it to. That's all I'm saying. Sure. Okay. Okay. I mean, I was just disagreeing with the point that uh, uh, you're kind of agreement with authoritarianism which oh is, uh, no i don't i'm i'm don't think i'm an, i'm not sure anymore actually i don't even know i mean you said you literally kind of questioned democracy there which i think is antithetical antithetical to our republic well yeah i question democracy because i don't i don't know if it fucking works because it seems like we have so, so i don't know we'll see what happens in the senate over the next 20 or 30 years now what do you mean you don't know if democracy works we we can see like how despotic governments have like worked over time and then how democracy has instituted the largest uh, prosperity increase in human history. Yeah, you say that now because we're standing at this now, but in 20 years, it might be different. In 20 years, you might look back and go like, oh shit, this is a huge like fucking mistake. Like things like climate change or our inability to mobilize certain parts of our government in order to fix some problems like healthcare, education actually made this a fucking horrible experiment. I mean, right now it seems like democracy might be the best, but there might be something better going forward. I don't know that. You know, until democracy came along, I'm sure that there was some form of uh, a, a, of, of oligarchical shit or whatever that was better than, than anything else up to that point as well, sure. I don't even know if democracy is the longest running, most successful form of government. What the fuck did Roman shit use? I'm sure that, like, I don't fucking know, dude. I mean, the Roman, the Roman was a very corrupt form of democracy. Sure, but they lasted like fucking 800 years or some shit, didn't they? Uh, I mean, it, do you really want to include like the Roman kingdom, which was like the size of just Rome and around it? Like, if, like, I guess. I don't know. When we include the United States, we go back to what is it, 1776, where we include like. Sure. Okay. Sure. But what, once, <laughs> I don't fucking revolt, know, dude. Like, <laughs> once we revolted from Britain, we. Like the amount of land we owned at that point was way was like a trillion times larger than what the Roman kingdom owned. Okay, I mean, I, okay, all right. I will put. I'm gonna look up school choice stuff and education spending on education per year, and then um, corporate corporate income tax, good or bad. These are the things that I'll look up for our next conversation. And then when I'm not traveling, I'll be at home, so I'll be able to do this in a much more organized fashion. Okay. Yeah, sure. Okay. Do you have any final thoughts? The last word. Uh, not really. Okay, all right, I love you. I'll, um, I'll be home in a pretty soonish, so I'll message you and we'll set something up, okay? Later. Okay, I love you, buddy. Be careful. Bye. Okay. All right, I love you guys. I've got things to read about. I'm sure he's got things to read about.